Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. This is probably the last video I'm going to do on Fatalis, but knock on wood. I'm not sure if that's actually true, but I know a lot of people are having trouble with this monster. So I wanted to give you sort of a video just covering some random grab bag of tips that you can pull from no matter what weapon you're using or however your play style is. This is not just like a full run showing you what to do in all the phases. This is just giving you points of advice that I've learned over countless hours of facing this monster and watching others die and trying to figure out where all the stuck points are. First, you know me, I love numbers. So here are the weaknesses as being shared in the Japanese community. So these are not official, so to say, but I trust these as being pretty much super accurate. If you notice the numbers in parentheses are for when you tenderize a part and the red ones show which parts trigger weakness exploit. Using Clutch Claw will never trigger weakness exploit on a part in which it didn't already activate on. So is Clutch Claw useless? Absolutely not. Obviously weakness exploit the skill itself does require a tenderized part in order to get the higher levels of affinity. And on top of that, if you're going after, let's say the back legs, 25% damage going through versus 38%, that's like a 50% increase. So definitely useful if you're going after those body parts. But don't kill yourself trying to use a Clutch Claw in order to deal damage because obviously looking at the head, you're really not going to be changing the damage that you're doing. This is more about tenderizing it for weakness exploit and for that bonus damage if you throw it into a wall. And Gunner, oh my gosh, 44 on the head if you use tenderizer is pretty much the monster giving the middle finger to Gunners saying, you're never going to get weakness exploit on my head, no matter what you do. Of course, in response, I imagine Gunners are just going to pepper its face with stickies, so it's a fair fight. Okay, moving over to the elemental weakness, we'll see obviously dragon is by far the best here. Um, however, fire is very decent as well. So if you're gonna pack an element, obviously a lot of weapons are fantastic for fighting Fatalis, especially with that wonderful purple sharpness. But if you're just not that good at a lot or you just don't wanna use those weapons, fire is another good choice as well. Ice is kinda meh and water and thunder is basically participation prize. To be frank though, you only have 30 minutes, so the main point here is going to be which does the most amount of damage with the playstyle that you enjoy and the weapons that you have. So if that happens to be a very high raw weapon with no element, that's fine. Or of course, a lot of weapons are fantastic if you're just looking for a no-brainer weapon to bring into the fight. Okay, before I jump into all my tips, I do want to say that this game is expecting you to have augmented your armor. Uh, so if you're at like 800 defense, you probably want to do the Guiding Lance and buff that up somewhere near a thousand. I think that's going to be a major difference. And of course, and I've already mentioned this twice in another video, so I'm not going to include it as an official tip. Uh, but just practicing against the monster or using your Palico with Plunder Blade, you'll probably get the materials to make the waist and the legs for Fatalis, which you can then use uh, sort of like Gold Rathian to get Divine Blessing 5, which will help you out immensely if you're having problems with getting hit. Okay, tip number one obviously is the cannonball opening sequence. I know some of you don't like to do this, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. If you can, it's always good to eat for feline bombardier. Uh, for this set, all you're gonna use is bombardier level five and heavy artillery level three. Those are the only two skills you actually need. Um, so it's very easy. So you should have no excuse making a set to do this. Place the mega barrel bombs here, not directly against that net. You want it to be a little bit off. Uh, that's what's going to stop Fatalis in a perfect position for the second cannon. Grab those stones if you want. I did put the Clutch Claw boost on this because it's a light bow gun, but if you're using a heavier weapon, it won't matter. Give this uh, right cannon one tick to the right. Go ahead and load up the second cannon. Of course, you need to put on your ghillie mantle before you start the fight, and you want to move this one three ticks. I know I've introduced methods with four and five, but three is what you want. And again, with those mega barrel bombs being placed a little bit off the fence, you'll see how this works out perfect. Wait for Fatalis to move its head from the screen right to the screen left. That's your timing to go and hit the cannons. So we're going to wait here for another shot here. Watch the face. It's screen right. Wait for it to go screen left. This will ensure that you hit it with all of them. Boom. Now go ahead and go here. He's going to come after you and hit those bombs in the face and that will set him up perfectly for this other cannon. And that will give you a large down. So from here, you can do all sorts of punishing things. For example, with the clutch claw boost and the light bow gun, I'm able to tenderize his face so we can get some extra break damage on those horns. Then I'm able to clutch claw on the face and simply wait for him to get up. Do a few hits with the clutch claw in order to enrage him and then finally just send him into the wall. That of course, because the faces tenderize, give us some extra part break damage on the face. 
So there he goes, and at this point, just far cast her back and get your regular set and continue the hunt as normal. Now, how much damage does this do? It does a lot. If you're going against Fatalis solo, he has about 66,000 health, so 7,169 is almost 11% of his entire health pool. So this is a huge start, and because of that bonus 1.5 times damage that we get to the horns because of the wall slam on a tenderized head, we're actually 25% already towards the first horn breaking. That is fantastic. Just so you know, a horn break is 4,500 damage times three times. You got to do that. Uh, so yeah, it takes a lot to break those horns. But you can break the first horn right after the first phase if you do this. Um, obviously, if you don't use the cannons at all and you just focus on the head, you can actually break the first horn in the first phase. But you have to be very focused on just the horns. Anyways, that's a lot of damage. So what happens if you don't have those two skills? Here I am with absolutely no armor on, so there's no uh, bombardier, there's no heavy artillery, and no feline bombardier. You're only doing 240 per cannonball. Watch what happens when he hits the bombs, it's not a lot either. It's uh, 225, and even if you hit all the shots, it's not enough to get that large down, so it's a very bad opener. However, you don't actually have to eat for feline bombardier. If you just have the heavy artillery 2 and bombardier level 5, you actually only do 450 less damage if you had that meal skill. So if you have feline insurance available when you go into this quest, go ahead and eat for that because it's not always available and you don't have to really beat yourself up for not having that feline bombardier. Speaking of meal skills, tip number two is unlock feline safeguard. I have a link to the video in the description down below, but I have a video talking about how to unlock this new meal skill. This works just like feline insurance, so if you cart, it doesn't count, and it stacks. So if someone with you, or if during the hunt you eat again and insurance is available, you'll be able to cart two times for free. That's a huge help for the people who are having a problem with this quest. Okay, getting into the actual hunt, my tip number three is learn to strafe left and right and not diagonal. So don't go towards Fatalis or away from him. Going towards him is going to guarantee you like a fireball in the face, and going away from him is going to set you up in a bad position for the Cone Breath Fire. So if you notice here, I'm just strafing to the left and right, and it gives me the opportunity to not only avoid the fireballs, but everything else as well. He always does like these triple fireballs, so if he does one, two, don't try to change direction in the middle of it or you're going to get a fireball to the face. Here's an example of what that looks like. So here he goes, he goes one, two, I don't know why I tried to go to the right, that's just a dumb move. <laughs> Tip number four, stay down if you do get hit by a fireball. I see this happen all the time. For example, you're here, I went towards him like an idiot, I got hit, and I try to get up and evade out of the way, and what happens? You die. The game has a feature in it that you have to use, which is if you get hit by a fireball, stay down until that third fireball is released. You will be safe, trust me, watch this. You're fine, now you just get up, nice and cool. Tip number five, avoid fighting Fatalis at a long distance. Now obviously no weapon is going to be good at a long distance, but try not to run away from his attacks, because if he sets you up at long distance, he will get you with the Cone Breath. There's almost no way to avoid it if you're too far out because of the way that it spreads out diagonally. Here's what that looks like. So here I am at long distance for just illustrative purposes. <laughs> I would never do this normally. Yeah, you think you can get out of it, you can't. You're gonna die. Which brings me into tip number six, which is how to survive the cone breath in case you do get caught in it. If you do get caught at long distance, maybe you're running away to heal and there's a cone breath, go ahead and do a Superman dive, wait until your hunter naturally gets up and quick do a second one. Not only should you be able to survive this, but a lot of times your teammates will notice that you're in the middle of it and they'll pop a life powder or something like that to help you out as well. So yeah, don't panic is really my main thing I'm trying to say here. Now the Cone Breath is a fantastic move that you can actually bait and punish. So if you stick in mid distance and you're doing some strafing, then this works really well for greatsword, uh, any attack that has a very strong clutch attack like the heavy bow gun, uh, switch axe of course is the most popular one right now. Um, just sticking around in mid-distance when he's up on his legs, you can bait him to do the Cone Breath and you are wide open to go in there and punish his face. Make sure though after you punish him to get out, because he doesn't always flinch and he leaves an explosive puddle by his face. So if you try to go in for a second hit, watch what happens. Schwap. Boom. <laughs> so don't get greedy. This is what I call the greed check, because it's a wide open attack, but if you stick around the face, you're going to get yourself hit. So just make sure you evade out of the way. Another common mistake I'm seeing, which is causing a lot of carding, is panicked clutching. 
The best way to think about this is the opportunity to use the Clutch Claw is not after the monster does an attack, it's during an attack. So if it does an attack and you don't even see the opening, you're too late. Don't even attempt it. So like here I was just showing an example trying to do it when he finishes his forward crawl. And it's human frustration when you miss the first clutch to try again, but don't. Like if you don't hit the face the first time, just leave it. Just wait for the next opportunity. It's not a big deal. So a good opportunity to actually use Clutch Claw is when Fatalis does a sweeping breath attack. If you're in a good position and you're not going to get hit by the initial wave, you can go ahead and just clutch on the face. Even though fire is coming out of his mouth, you're not going to take any damage. And it's a perfect opportunity to tenderize your Clutch Claw if he can be heated into a wall and stuff like that. Of course, if you don't have the opportunity, just do a Superman dive and wait for the next one. Again, just having patience is really what you really need to do. Uh, in this hunt, although I do know that the 30 minute timer can be kind of stressful. Tip number nine, not a major one, but smoke bombs can actually be useful in two different parts during this hunt. One of them is if Fatalis is in the air, you can actually just use smoke bombs to get it to drop back down to the ground. This is great in like phase three if it starts to waste time. Just get in a nice safe spot where it's not actively attacking you, throw some smoke bombs and you're good. Another one is right after phase one, if you use some smoke bombs around the ballista here, uh, it actually gives you quite a big opening here where you're wailing on it and Fatalis hasn't really realized what's going on. Uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to get some damage in, but I still would not recommend uh, jumping on this gun without the temporal mantle on because you can get caught in fire. Another minute tip, but tip number 10 is pre-position that rotary uh, ballista. That thing can move around and it's great. So if you know that you're going to use a binder on him and then you're going to attack him with it, go ahead and move it over towards the binder first. This will save you time from when you're running to get it. Uh, and this is just great because the rotary cannon is also a great shortcut to get towards the barricade in case you're far away. So fighting around this thing is actually really good for added mobility. I screwed up here. I didn't hold the trigger <laughs> at the right time and I got a delayed start. Uh, but you can see that just having it right next to the binder is quite convenient and allows you to get off some really good damage. Always bring heavy artillery level 2. Later in the fight, it will do its super attack and you have to run underneath Fatalis. There's no other place to run, so don't panic if you're in the middle of these fire effects because the initial fire is actually probably not going to kill you. It's not a huge amount of damage. Just keep running towards it and towards underneath Fatalis. If you panic and you try to run from it, try to superman dive, you're going to die. There's no way to avoid it. So just be brave and run forward and preferably at an angle so you're not going directly at the tip of the fire. Tip 12, in phase 3 a lot of people seem to cart to this 360 degree fire wave. Uh, what you want to do is just clutch on or stay next to its hind leg on the opposite end. Obviously Fatalis is not going to go and burn himself in his own foot. Uh, so if you see that he's you know arcing to the left, go ahead and grab on or just stand by the right foot and do some damage and you'll be fine. You can sit here just whacking away uh, inside his body as sort of like a safe spot, or you can just clutch on if you're not sure where to stand. Tip number 13 sounds like an obvious one, but use life powders if you're online. You'd be surprised how much it really helps. For example, here I'm a real idiot and I'm not really paying attention to the explosion right below me and I'm just trying to go for a mount. I get hit for quite a lot of damage, but if you notice, my health is going back up because my teammates are awesome and they're using life powders. This is also really good if you guys are running towards sort of let's say the barricade or underneath Fatalis. Anybody who might be in the lead just like start popping life powders on your way there and it generally will help everybody uh, survive it as they get there because remember the initial fire generally doesn't kill you. It's just that second wave of fire burst that will do most of the damage. So yeah, life powders for the win. And finally, I know I've been kind of preaching this hardcore, but tip 14 is just learn the tells of Fatalis. Go ahead and do an observation hunt and really learn all of its different moves that it can do. For example, here is the fast three fireball that it just did. If you notice, there's really no room to do anything afterwards. So this is not an opening that you can exploit. If it does that fire wave, as I showed before, you can go ahead and do the clutch claw. This is great for enraging the monster. If you're using the agitator skill, keeping this monster enraged the entire time will increase the amount of damage that you do which is fantastic because you only have 30 minutes. So I recommend just making sure that it's always enraged. Don't ever have it in the yellow. If you see that little yellow tick on the map, go ahead and find an opportunity to clutch it. Either just use the clutch three times or slam it into a wall. Depending on your weapon, obviously you'll be either fighting close distance or medium distance. Medium distance weapons like the Great Sword are, I think, a very strong matchup against this monster because you can just sort of wait for moments to exploit it and just punish it. 
Where if you're playing a weapon that's more faster, I think you do have to get behind the monster a little bit. So make sure you do observation hunts uh, for all the subcases that work for the weapons that you're going to be playing. And just watch. I mean, I, it's amazing that it feels like these monsters have a thousand moves. But when you go ahead and you do an observation hunt, you realize they really only have about 10 different moves that they do. And what they do depends on whether you're close to them, medium distance, or far distance away. So learn the AI, learn which moves you're good at, which ones to avoid and exploit the living heck out of it. The other benefit to taking probably a good hour to do this is the psychological benefits. For example, if you ever play Tetris and you go to like a really late level, everything seems so fast and you're like, there's no way I could react in time, like this is too fast. But after you do the level over and over again, things start to just feel slower because your eyes and your mind, everything is getting used to it and you're processing information better. The same thing applies to Monster Hunter as well. Fatalis may seem really fast, super powerful, unavoidable at first, but the more you spend time just in the ring in front of it, the more, uh, I think, less apprehensive you're going to feel around it, the more just less stressful, the less panicked, and that's going to lead to much smoother and better hunts and eventually going to lead to you beating the monster. Obviously, this is going to be very hard to do on SOS because you don't know the mental state or even the prepared state of all the other hunters um, so I do recommend going solo or with a friend two players is a fantastic way to do fatalis so if you can find somebody great if not I think it's definitely doable solo uh, but definitely do some observation hunts I really really think that this is the most important thing you can do and final tip and this is more specific to insect glaive users but tip 15 jump away from stuff don't try to jump over the monster I know a lot of people say that this is a bad hit zone but when he's charging at you, don't try to jump over him. Just jump out of the way. I know you may not like it because it doesn't seem like the hitbox hit you, but that's the rules of engagement, so you gotta follow them. Anyways, that really covers all the different tips and advice I have for Fatalis, and I sincerely hope that this helps you if you're having trouble with the monster. You don't have to use all of these tips and all these different strategies. These are just things to keep in mind in case you're having trouble. I do also recommend watching some people run it on YouTube, just seeing how someone with the weapon that you use approaches the monster can be actually really interesting because it might expose some openings that you can punish that you are not aware of. And finally, I'll put a link to it in the description down below as well, but I do have a video about how to get better at Monster Hunter in general, and one of the things that I mentioned in there is to think of it as a turn-based combat. Your turn, my turn, and I think that really applies here with Fatalis as well. Although you do have to be a little bit more aggressive since you only have 30 minutes, but if you just practice all these principles well and you take advantage of all the different weapons that the arena has, you should have no problem beating it within 30 minutes. Anyways, hope this video helped. Leave a comment down below if you have any other tips for other players who are struggling. And until next time, happy hunting.